It has been an incredibly painful past few days in the stock market. My personal portfolio has tanked larger than I would have ever expected in a three day span. But as many of you might not find surprising, I have not sold a single share in any one of my stocks. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys two reasons why stocks have been performing so bad over the past one week. And when can we expect a pivot from the Fed who seems to be controlling every single equity and bond market out there in the United States? All I'm going to say is that this is a historic market. So brace yourselves for some of the data I'm about to show you, which might scare you or make you more optimistic about buying the dip. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, I want to cut right to the chase and explain why growth stocks, particularly the ones in my portfolio, have been performing so poorly over the past five or six trading days. As you can see, the core reason for that is something called the Russell 2000 index, which I've talked about multiple times over the past six months in this bear market. You see, the IWM tracks the small cap stocks in the stock market, roughly 2000 of them, which have a market cap below five to two billion dollars, which means that if you're a growth stock investor and a lot of my companies in my portfolio are, then this is the index you really want to pay attention to because it tells you the risk appetite of the stock market. As you can see, the rally we saw in July and August was significant, which led many people to believe that that could have been the bottom. And as we all know, growth stocks always tend to bottom before the rest of the market when the market recovers, which means that if the IWM is rallying, there's a very high likelihood the rest of the market might also rally. But what has happened over the past month or so is that this thing has been collapsing faster than the S&P 500, which means that your growth stocks are going to get absolutely decimated, even though the indices might not be doing that bad. And so by any chance, if you're wondering why these stocks have been getting decimated, it's simply driven by algorithms that track the Russell 2000, which are right now panicking because of what the Fed has done and the expectation that interest rates might stay high for an extended period of time. And as we know, when interest rates go up, it's the growth companies and the early stage businesses that get hit the hardest because chances are those are the companies that are going to have to raise capital soon. And as a result, it's going to become more expensive for them to raise that money. But the good thing and the opportunity here is that none of this selling has to do with most of the fundamentals of any of the stocks that you invest in or I invest in. It's mostly driven by evaluation compression driven by macroeconomic headwinds nothing to do with the actual businesses. So if you're a long term investor who has significant conviction in their companies, then this is the opportunity of a lifetime to buy the dip and not panic sell like most retail investors are doing who bought extremely hyped up stocks with absolutely no conviction throughout 2020 and 2021. But you know what's really sad? A lot of retail investors still don't realize the historic nature of this current bear market that we're in, which we have not seen in over 41 years. And this right here is a culprit of that. As you can see, the 20 year Treasury bond and the S&P 500 are highlighted in their year to date gains over the past 60 years. And here in 2022, what we're witnessing is something we have not seen in over that 60 year time frame, which is a 20 year bond outperforming the S&P 500 to the downside. And that too, with a massive margin compared to what happened in 1968 and 1970. Guys, let me say that once more, the stock market and the bond market are having their worst performance together in over 45 years. Let me say that once more for the people in the back. The stock market in 2022 is performing worse than it did in 1969. Imagine where you were in 1969. Chances are a lot of you were not even born back then. The stock market and bond market combo is performing worse than 2008, 2002, and even 2020. And so it's up to you to decide. Is this an opportunity to buy or is this another time to panic and sell at the bottoms? like most of these folks did who ended up missing out on these massive gains in the bull markets that preceded these massive bear markets. And for those wondering why exactly the bond market has been performing historically poorly, well, it has everything to do with the fact that the Fed is raising interest rates at a pace that we have not seen in 41 years, 
which means that many companies don't have the time to react to this incredibly high rate hike. And as a result, what that does is that it increases the yields on treasury bonds, because obviously now investors have a higher interest that they can gain by buying treasuries and bonds. And a byproduct of that is that the dollar is now sitting at its strongest point since 2002, right after the dot-com bubble popped. And unlike what many people think, a high dollar is actually not a good thing for the US economy in the long term if it's sustained for a very long time. Because it means imports are going to become more expensive as a currency rate exchange increases compared to other currencies from China and from Europe. And even if you want to compare this to the time of high inflation in the 1970s, as you can see, the dollar actually went down during that time, even when the stock market was going up which means that we are truly witnessing a historic bear market that we have not seen in over 100 years since the influenza pandemic in 1918. And that right there is the reason why you cannot compare the inflation and interest rate combo we're seeing today with what happened in the 1980s and the 70s. Many people have been saying that you need the interest rate from the Fed funds rate to go above the percent rate of change of inflation, which obviously is sitting at around 8% right now, with rates sitting at around 3.25. So that's scaring a lot of people out of the market thinking that the Fed is going to need to be more aggressive and raise rates throughout 2023, which will obviously crash the market significantly. And as a result, people are just selling in anticipation. But what many people don't realize is that this inflation is driven by the pandemic, not a systemic monetary policy issue, unlike in the 70s, where we actually went off the gold standard, which reduced confidence in the US dollar. And like I just showed you, that confidence loss is what caused the US dollar to collapse. And that, as a result, caused the Fed to be very aggressive for a very long period of time to get more money from foreign investors. Whereas this inflation we're seeing today in the 2022 era is simply driven by supply chain issues and excess demand created by stimulus checks from 2021. As someone who works in the engineering industry, I can already tell you that the supply chain situation has improved significantly, rates for shipping are coming down, and inventories are being built up, which means that at some point, costs will come down. And as for what that point could be, Estimates currently show it could be the spring of 2023 if inflation is actually peaked based on the trend over the past two months. And the most important part about this chart is that this is being calculated based on the month over month changes of CPI, which is something most people are simply not paying attention to right now, which is already showing us that inflation is near the peak. And so with the constant month over month changes we're seeing right now, it's expected that CPI could reach around that 3% level in the spring of 2023, which means that at some point, the Fed at that time will stop rate hikes. And if in a miraculous situation, the Fed funds rate is now higher than CPI year over year, then at that point, the Fed might actually consider cutting interest rates because we could already be headed into a deflationary period with the amount of inventories that are being built up just like Kathy Wood and Elon Musk have already pointed out. As you can see, it's a very rare occurrence to see the dollar and the CPI data rallying at the same time, like what we're seeing today. And as you can see, we all know what happened after those events. We saw the dollar collapse, which obviously means interest rates are likely being cut. And I'm sure you guys can already see that inflation historically has always had aggressive moves to the upside, followed by aggressive moves to the downside, which means that whenever inflation actually peaks within the next 12 months, the downside could be immense, which could catalyze stocks. And as for what I'm doing with my portfolio, as you can see, I'm clearly struggling a little bit over the past couple of weeks, as I've seen some of my gains evaporate in STEM and plug power. But I have not sold a single share in any one of these companies. Instead, I've actually been buying the dip and adding more in some of the stocks that are excessively oversold to the downside, like Nikola Motors and X Bung Motors. Because historically, retail investors have always lost money when they make short term decisions for long term portfolios. And I could have sold a lot of my stocks that were in a significant profit in the August rally for a massive gain. But I didn't. And that is what's going to hopefully separate me from the rest of the crowd, because I have significant conviction in my stocks, and I am not playing the profit loss statement that I see. 
even on something like Xpeng Motors, which has declined significantly over the past two months, I could have taken profits in this June rally as I was up over 40 to 50% on my position. But I decided not to because at the end of the day, I continued to want to build my position in this company because of the growth trajectory I'm seeing in 2023 and 24. But obviously, that is simply my opinion and strategy. So let me know down in the comment section below what you guys are doing in this massive and historic bear market.